Jeff. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you. We're here in Texas uh, test driving the new 2017 Honda Ridgeline and uh, this field and any other field. I mean, there are people who know and they're experts. <laughs> we have an expert <laughs> because Jeff, uh, all he does at uh, Temple of VTEC, right? Yep. It's Hondas. Yeah, Honda accurate, accurate, that's it. So if you want to know something about Honda, this is the one to learn everything about it. So. Um, Obviously a very exciting time for Honda, I guess, and for a lot of people who've been asking what happened with the Rich Line, which yeah. went out of production, what? In 2014, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, it definitely, I mean, a lot of new products coming out this year for Honda. A lot of people have been asking about the Ridge Line. Now we can tell everybody about the Ridge Line. So what can you tell? Initial impressions. We already drove, uh, let's say, uh, 100 miles or more or less yeah, from yeah. San Antonio out here to this lake. Yeah, it's very impressive. I mean, it's very clearly um, related to the Pilot. It drives a lot like a Pilot. Uh, maybe a little bit feels a little lighter maybe on, on its feet yeah. than the pilot, but very comfortable very quiet um, Very refined, you know, especially compared to like th there was two competing makes here one from Toyota and one from uh, Chevrolet Yeah, the Tundra and the Colorado exactly and those are nice trucks and but they're more truck and yeah. uh, they, they feel like trucks um, The interior of those is a little bit more compact feeling they definitely feel the additional more bare I mean they don't have yeah. as much maybe that Toyota a little bit better than yeah. the, the Chevrolet yeah the Chevrolet has a little bit more of a basic uh, you know work. at least the trims that they have there I mean there are right. versions that might have other stuff like certainly they have the Black Knight edition that has all, all the things but I all mean the, yeah. but they're like trucks yes and this is also a truck but I, this is like a weird combination or like, not weird is the right or to, to say but it's like a it's different unexpected combination. combination exactly yeah that's what I was trying you, to say it's kind of surprising you get in it and you're like wow it's really smooth and quiet exactly and then like for example here now we're going almost 50 miles an hour I can speed up to 60 and the speed limit is 55 here so maybe I better, I better <laughs> hold to that because there's police all over the place right uh, and it's incredibly quiet I mean you can yeah. have this conversation with no no exterior noise sometimes we get crosswind and you hear a little bit a little bit over the mirrors but I think that's because as we noted, the tires are so quiet and everything else is so quiet, you notice just about anything that exactly. isn't quiet. So when the road got a little noisier, like we went over a coarse surface, then you didn't really notice the wind noise because you could hear the tires. But it's so quiet on a normal smooth road that you know you hear everything. So, so going back to your initial comment about feeling or looking like the pilot, that's some of the criticism that some people have about it like yeah it doesn't look like a truck it right. looks like a SUV crossover even a minivan if you want to be extreme into that yeah the front the front view of it is probably the weakest uh, angle if you're looking at it uh, you know from the side it looks like a traditional truck rear three-quarter view looks nice and yeah you know reasonably macho um, but yeah they, uh, they you know they have fairly narrow tires on it and they're they're 18 inch tall but um, you know Honda's all about road manners and um, quiet. Yeah, it doesn't want to be extreme. Like right. it doesn't want to be a homer. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. So it's got you know it has the uh, the more ro excuse me road oriented tires and uh, obviously those don't look as, as burly as you know some of the other trucks on the road with the big wider tires. But on the other hand, it has so many many advantages yeah. over the other trucks in general. Truck, like what you were saying, handling. I mean, like we were there at this lake and we were. Going to, the, the roads weren't that nice there, and there was like a little elevation and curve. Yeah, and this thing turns like a car. Yeah, and it's I, you know, Honda's approach is they use the unibody uh, structure. You know, it's not a body on frame like most pickups. So the uh, torsional rigidity of this thing is so much stronger. Yeah, and, and more stiff than your typical pickup truck, which you know the bed moves independent of the uh, or somewhat independent of the cab because you know there's a little bit of torsional you know flexibility in, in the body on frame. Um, approach, but you know th those those approaches have their own advantages. But Honda decided to make the Ridgeline a better driving vehicle, but it's still very capable. I mean, it has the highest payload in its class. All-wheel drive. Yeah, all-wheel drive. Um, it tows really well. We, we yeah, we saw that there with the boat. Yeah, yeah. with a Honda boat, of course. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, I've I've pulled uh, trailers with Ridgelines before, and it's it's very stable. You know, that's they use their their VTM system to help keep everything in, in order you know you know VTM is the uh, like variable torque management system yeah. so it, and basically now it's you know it used to be you had VTM and then you had SHL wheel drive at Acura and here's a little secret the the current VTM system is essentially the same as the Acura SHL different name drive. marketing yeah <laughs> so they uh, they came up with like an enhanced VTM4 
and uh, but now it does the torque vectoring just like the Acura system, which actually helps um, control trailer sway. Like if you're if you're on the highway and there's crosswinds, they'll actually use torque vectoring to help stabilize the vehicle as you're going down the road. Even more stable and more yeah, like, so more like, like refining ex driving experience. Exactly, and you don't have to worry so much about you know the trailer like walking the back of your truck yeah. around. So. It just t kind of takes the driver's mind off of worrying about that so much. Um, but if you've ever been in, a, in that kind of situation, you know, older vehicles especially, it can be pretty scary when, when the trailer starts I know. dictating where you're going. You don't want to wanna feel that. No. So, uh, and then the other things that always been very popular with uh, the ridge line, the trunk on the bed, yeah. the, the double hinge uh, Yeah, that's one tailgate. of my favorite features. Yeah. yeah. The, the in-bed trunk is awesome because, you know, everybody's got something they, they need to leave. You know, they don't want to end the car necessarily, but yeah. you, you want to secure it. You can't leave it in the bed of your truck on an open bed, you know, golf clubs or something like that. Or beers on nice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want people taking all your beer while you're at the game, right? You know, you're yeah. a little bit. And then also this one, this new one has a feature that is really amazing. It's the audio system off the bed. Yeah, exactly. They have the, uh, it's interesting. It's like they basically have the, the drivers from a speaker with no cones and it's bolted directly to the, the, the structure of the basically uses the entire wall of the bed as, as the speaker. That's amazing. And then with the combo of the, of the trunk, which kind of, again, it can serve as a cooler for beer. That's like the perfect yeah, tailgate beach machine. car or tailgating yeah, exactly. or whatever. Yeah, and it's, you know, protected from the elements, so you don't have to worry about, you know, people can't steal these speakers because it's built into the vehicle, I know. you know. So you can't even see it. Yeah. yeah, you look back there, there's nothing. It just looks like a trunk bed, but there's a six speakers in it. It's pretty ingenious engineering from, and design-wise from, from Honda. Yeah. So finally, let's talk a little about the engine. Only one engine uh, available for the, for this new Rich Line, right? Yes, and it's the uh, it's a 3.5 liter V6, which is pretty much Honda's workhorse V6, found in everything from the Accord to the Pilot to the Odyssey, and of course the Rich Line here. Um, and this trim level, it makes in all Rich Lines, it makes 280 horsepower, and I believe it's 262 foot pounds of torque. And uh, the Rich Line only gets a six-speed automatic, whereas I guess in the uh, Pilot right now you can get a nine-speed. A nine, yeah. Yeah. And the mileage in this one was pretty good. I mean, uh, the, when we had the first leg of our drive, at the end we were pushing a little bit, meaning that we were like driving that hard or anything. Yeah. Just to be to be able to see on the gauge here, 25 miles per gallon. Yeah, we did. I mean, we, we did a couple acceleration passes just to see how the engine felt, but for the most part, it was pretty relaxed drive. And, but yeah, I mean, four-wheel drive truck, it, miles per gallon is not that bad yeah and again this car um, serves like two many many uses uh, and they were like talking about how during the week you can use it for like go commuting go to school or whatever go to the grocery and then in the weekends you can do pretty much anything with it uh, and they designed around that the 5-2 concept and I think they threw out some statistics talking about certain it's a very high percentage I forget what they said but of any given pickup truck that drives by you on the road, the majority of them don't have anything in the bed. It's usually one passenger. I know, yeah. So they designed this truck kind of around those parameters. When you need the cargo capacity and, you know... The off-road or yeah, anything. The all the towing. Yeah, right. And you, but, it, but they don't put so much of that into it that it kills the five days a week where you use it to get to work. You know? Yeah. So some trucks are, you know, overbuilt for off-roading or towing. Um, which sacrifices, you know, fuel economy, ride comfort, things like that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing how much things uh, manufacturers put in the cars, and then people don't really use them. Yeah, exactly. See, in Miami, you see a lot of Range Rovers, a lot of uh, G wagons, or Mercedes, so, like cars, like really, really Jeeps, very over engineered. Like yeah. over engineered, like people could go like to Moab with yeah. them, and they go like on US one in the traffic, yeah. and they don't use it. So again, going back to that concept of Monday to Friday, nine to five thing. Fortunately, you and me don't have that problem, right? We can That's go right. during the week, anytime. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it, there is a, there are advantages to working from home. So. Exactly. <laughs> so again, vehicle stopped on shoulder ahead. So that was the Waze app. Not that we don't trust the Navi in the system, but like it's always good to have extra help. Right? Yeah, we're uh, always vigilant of patrols. So, so again, Jeff Palmer, um, again go and visit. Uh, Temple of uh, Bitech, yep. and again, he is really the true expert. You've been doing this for what, 20 years? Something like that, yeah, a little over 20 years. So, so again, there's like people like me who get to do a few things, and then like we think we know a little bit, and then we find 
find like the real experts. Like that. <laughs> All so, right. Thank you very much, Jeff. Good talking to you, Harvey. Thank you. Thank you.